Hi, and welcome back to our writing videos for this term. In our last video, we talked about writing from multiple perspectives. So writing from a first person point of view or a third person point of view or things like that. Today, I wanna to take a step back and go through what second person looks like. Second person narrative is the least common point of view. You'll see why, but I wanna also talk about the positives that can come out of it and the ways that you might wanna use it when you're writing in the future. So what is a second person narrative? A second person narrative narrator is when you use the pronoun you to address the reader. So instead of saying I or like Michael, you're going to say the thing you, you're directly addressing them. So I'll give you an example of this. You walk up to the front door, but something doesn't feel like you look around, but you can't see anyone. You knock on the door faintly, but you can't hear an answer. Should I go inside? You think to yourself as you slowly step through you're, you're constantly making the reader put themselves in that situation by addressing them as you, okay? It's a really, really great thing to make the reader feel part of the story and make them place themselves in the role of the main character. When you're saying I, they can distance themselves, but if you're saying you, they have to put themselves in that position. So it can be a really, really useful technique. It's not very common in long fiction stories. It can be used in a short story, but you won't, won't really find any long novels that are written in that point of view. Um, but it's used quite a lot in advertising and I'll get to that. It can be a useful strategy to make the reader feel part of the story, but why is it not used often? It's not used often because it's quite exhausting. If you have to put yourself in the whole story, if you're reading a story and you want to escape the whole thing of just like, and then you have to do this, and then you walk down the street, you, it can, after a while, it can get quite confusing to have to constantly be, um, be trying to put yourself in that story. So not many people want to read a story, a whole book that's written in the second person. And constantly saying like you, your, then you do this, then you think this it can get very repetitive for the person who's reading it and for the person who's writing it. Like I said before, it's very common in advertising. If you think about it, when you're trying to sell someone something, it's like, uh, are you always doing this? Like, well, why don't you decide that you're going to, okay, can get used quite a lot. You probably spend way too much time or energy on this or things like that, right? So the audience may not relate to what you're saying. If you're trying to say like, and then your character... I don't know, bashes someone, I'd be like, I would never do that. I'm not relating to this story. I could relate to it if it was written in the third person, but now that they're making me put myself in that situation, I don't feel like that relates to me. How are we going to use it? So we're going to try to use it to make the audience sort of have a glimpse into our imagination and to try to make them feel what's in our mind. Usually we're going to use this to be really positive or negative. So we're going to write a short positive a short piece, a short writing piece, and you can make it really, really good or really, really bad. What I want you to do is I want you to write a short little writing piece about someone walking into a hotel room. And, they're, and you're going to say, like, as you walk up to the front door and this happens to you, right? It can be a really positive experience of a hotel room or a really negative one. You need to address that. So if we're talking about positives, it could be that they, they're going to this amazing, lavish suite. It's like the most awesome hotel room. Um, Super comfy bed, huge spa bath. There's a PS5 hooked up to the TV. There's a buffet of food. It smells amazing, whatever, right? And you're trying to get people to put themselves in that amazing situation. What would it be like if to go into that sort of room? Or you can switch it around, which I like to do, and you can make it so what would happen if it was like the hotel room from hell? And it's like they're, they're, they're going up to this place and the whole part of it from the start of it, there's wet carpet, dirty bed, noisy, like really traffic out in the road. There's a tiny bathroom that hasn't been cleaned. And how are you going to write either one in the second person, okay? doesn't need to be that long. I just wrote the start of it and then I stopped because I didn't want to get too far. And I wrote like this. As you walk into the hotel room, you can already smell the disgusting odor from inside. You slowly turn the broken handle door handle and walk in. You are speechless. This is where you're forced to stay? A prison looks nicer than this. As you take one step, you feel the, sorry, shoot, you feel a squelchy sound. How is the carpet so wet, you think to yourself? and so on and so on. So it's all written in the third, the second person, sorry. Um, yeah, so this is your task for today to write a short little writing piece in the second person about what would happen if you went into a hotel room that's amazing or one that was horrible and how would you make the audience feel either really like they want to be there or that this would be the worst day ever, okay? All right, good luck with that. Thank you for watching. Good luck. 